Hello, and welcome back to the Utah Tech Leads Leadership Series. Today, we are joined by Howard Hawkhauser. How are you doing, Howard? I'm doing pretty well. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself and about Ancestry. Yeah, gosh. So I, I'm from New York. I moved out to Utah about 15 years ago uh, with my family for what I thought would be a two-year stint in Utah. And 15 years later, uh, and a couple of kids, I'm here and loving every minute of it. So tell us a little bit about how you ended up here in Utah. I know a two-year contract um, turned into 15 years, but what actually like pulled you here? What was the appeal? Yeah, so I um, met Ancestry, the, the mission of the company, and that's what pulled. That's what keeps me here. That's what pulled me here. I have been living downtown, Lower Manhattan, and found my great grandfather's old man's draft card for World War II. And as it turns out, he had been living down the block from where I was living and walking my daughter to school. And I was blown away that, you know, I could go online and find his signature, his address. And literally his life was right near my life. And I had no idea. And so that discovery, like really got me fired up and energized to join the company. And since then, you know, we've grown the company from $100 million to over a billion dollars. And even to this day, I just showed you this story. You know, I just went online and found the story about my parents um, making the front page of, their, of a newspaper about a trip they took to Europe and there was a bomb scare and they had to evacuate. And I apparently was uh, the baby my mom was pregnant with and had to jump down the plane slide. So that, that you know, the stories like that are pretty amazing and only Ancestry could deliver that. That's absolutely true. I actually have a story of my own. I didn't know that my mom lived in Ogden for a year and um, my ex-husband and I got married and my mom gave me this big old dresser and I absolutely loved it. And I've kept it with me at every house that I've, that I've lived in and I've painted it all sorts of colors and refinished it and come to find out my grandmother actually bought it at a fire sale in Ogden. So it went from Ogden <laughs> to the Sacramento area, to Oklahoma, to Arkansas, and then back to Utah. So those kind of circuitous routes are always entertaining and interesting to find out where, where your family's been before, for sure. So have you always been involved in the tech community or, or was Ancestry kind of your first little dive into it? So I worked for Martha Stewart for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's media, that's tech, that was... TV show that was a little bit of everything and then worked on Wall Street before that. But I've always worked for entrepreneurs. My dad was an entrepreneur. Uh, then I worked for Bear Stearns, which was run by an entrepreneur, Scott East Greenberg. Martha is in my mind, the ultimate entrepreneur oh, yeah. um, who is just out in Utah and loves this place. And, you know, Ancestry is, is no different. Absolutely. It's really interesting how tech is kind of proliferating throughout all sorts of different industries in ways that people don't always think about. It's it's one of those fun little factors of, of what we get to do here. So you mentioned that you've you've worked for, you've known, and you are yourself an entrepreneur. What are some of the best leadership skills that you've either seen in other people or have been able to develop in yourself? That's a good question. Um I would say you know, be curious or the, those are the things I've seen people and be optimistic. You know, it's so easy when someone comes up with an idea to give up, come up with the 10 reasons why it won't work against the one reason why it will. And there has to be just this innate sense of optimism and, and confidence, uh, not blind com to confidence, but just the sense of optimism and confidence that the idea could work. Absolutely. I've, I've seen that optimism all sorts of all over the place here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you've been able to grow Ancestry in the way that you have and its impact in Utah. I think Utahns know Ancestry really, really well. People across the country and across the world know Ancestry much better now. But what was it like to actually grow the company and grow with the company? Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned Utah. Utah is what has helped us grow. This has been a great place to recruit people, to hire people, um, really to run a business. And that's what has helped us grow is being here and the people here. Um, but it's it's this 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 mission that we have for 40 years been focused on family history and helping people discover who they are and, and search records and content. And we have been focused on that same mission for 40 years and really haven't deviated. 
And so that loyalty, that faith to this, this, this purpose, you know, of self-discovery has you know, allowed us to grow every year and to continue to bring more people into the family history fold. So some combination of, you know, focus on the mission, but also being here in this place, you know, exudes family history. Everybody lives talking about it. So when you hire someone in Utah, you know, they're just passionate about what they do. Absolutely. And as you all have grown, the state has grown. So how do you manage to stay up to date on all the little things that you need to keep track of, including what's going on with your competitors? So that last part, I would say, you know, we're family history. It's, it's really interesting. It's really more focused about, or we focus rather more on consumers and getting more people into the field. It's not, we're not trying to take share from somebody. We're trying to get more people, more consumers around the world doing family history. Uh, it, it's not about taking a point or two from somebody else, but getting increasing the total pie of people participating in the service. Staying up to date on what's going on. Uh, well, fortunately now we're we're out of COVID and everyone's back hanging out with one another and there's no duplicating, just catching up with people one-on-one -on -one, in addition to a Zoom meeting like this. Um, and Utah is another way, you know, another great way of doing that and going out for a hike or going skiing come in pretty handy when you want to catch up with people. Absolutely. Getting outdoors has always been the easiest yeah. way to tackle hard questions or thoughts or things I have to untie for sure. So tell us a little bit about how you've managed to figure out how to balance your personal and your professional life. Gosh, I guess the honest answer is I don't. Yeah, meaning, that's fair. Totally fair. <laughs> meaning, if you ask my kids, they can tell you as much, you know, when I have earnings call or when a board meeting is coming up. And it's sort of intentional. I just let them swim together. And it actually works out pretty well. And there are times when I put work down or put, you know, family down or life down. Um, but I don't try and compartmentalize them. I let them all just hang out together and actually works out really well. And that means I could take a vacation when I thought I couldn't because I'll just carve out a day to do some work or vice versa. Um, yeah, so it's um, letting them both sort of interact and not trying to like put up walls against either one has worked out really well for me. Well, and I think the mission of the company helps with that quite a bit too. You're, you've got a values-based organization and those values translate pretty well into your actual family when you're talking about yes. your previous family. So it works out, yeah. it works out well, for sure. Yeah, I showed this story to my dad and he was blown away. The whole, yeah. you know, he made the front page of a newspaper. Um, so oh, did after, he not know? Did he not know? He uh, obviously knew about the story, but didn't realize or had since forgotten that he was literally the front page, him, him and uh, my mom, the front page of the newspaper. That's so funny with the with the plane and all of the slides out and yeah. everything, the big old Pan Am sign. It was pretty, it's a pretty cool article for sure. So um, tell us a little bit about what you see in the future, whether it be for ancestry or for tech in general. What kinds of bumps in the roads do you see? What kind of opportunities do you see happening? Yeah, gosh, you know, fortunately, I think there's a lot more opportunity than bumps. I think the bump that we'll go through now is this with Silicon Valley Bank uh, exiting that will likely lead to some more regulation, which will lead to higher cost of capital, which at some point will lead to either tighter funding or higher cost to the consumer. Yeah. Um, so that will lead to a tighter environment for some small companies. The upside is, you know, innovation continues to accelerate. And in our world, we have taken AI and I'll, I'll give you an example. We used, it took us nine months to digitize the 1940 census. There's over hundred million names and each one had to be hand keyed in you know, by a human being. Fast forward to this year with 1950 census, we used AI and it took nine days to do the entire thing and give it right to our consumers for free. So it's radically changing what we're doing. It's accelerating, you know, the pace of change, it's accelerating, frankly, the features that are getting delivered to a consumer. Uh, so for a subscriber to Ancestry, the next five years are probably being a lot more discoveries than the past five years ever had. And and probably by a factor of like two or three X, not by a little bit. So the pace of innovation is just going to accelerate. And, and so for folks, you know, that are starting out or, or even in a company like Ancestry, it's about, I would say that what we talked about earlier, being curious, being optimistic, leaning into investing um, and leaning into growth. 
Absolutely. That's totally understandable. So Ancestry as a company is really, really invested in Utah and the community and its local communities as well. So top to bottom, you guys are there, you show up, you're supporting different events, you're attending different events, you're creating different events, and you're welcoming the community in as well as going to the community. Why is that so important for you and for Ancestry? Yeah, this I and I this is why I stayed here for 15 years. I think Utah and its people sort of this is the secret sauce to why we've been so successful. Everything from, you know, I talked about, you know, curiosity, but frankly, people here are frugal, right? That's a great thing when you're trying to run a business, you want to be really cost effective. People here are passionate about family history. People want to tell stories. And so for us, the people in the community have been everything. And so we do like to give back, you know, last year, Memorial Day, I was picking weeds at the veteran cemetery to sort of clean up the cemetery in advance of, of remembering Memorial Day. So we all live here. Our families are here. Everybody went to school here. Uh, and so it's part of who we are is giving back to the local community. Absolutely. So why do you all decide? Why did you all decide to support uh, Utah Tech Leads? We, you know, again, it's like Utah's key to what we do. And part of what has been so successful is our, in some way, our partnership or lack thereof with sort of the government. Like we really could do what we want to do so long as it's in a constructive way that mm -hmm. serves our consumers. Um, and so that partnership has been really helpful in facilitating what's great for the community, our subscribers, our shareholders. And I think Utah Tech Leads does that exceedingly well. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to talking to you in the future. Yeah, good to catch up.